Hi friends, I'm Mary Aaronworth. I'm Senior Deputy Director at the Reading and Writing Project at Columbia University. And I wanted to help you today with one thing, which is both why you'd wanna read aloud at night to your children when you can, especially to your very young children, but really honestly, as long as they'll let you do it, and particularly one way of reading aloud, which will help your kids learn more literary vocabulary, more sort of fancy words. So the truth is that research is really clear on this. There have been these really well-known researchers in reading like Tim Rosinski and Freddie Hebert and Dave Pearson. And you can read it, I mean, if you wanted to, you could read about this. It's in the International Reading Association writes about this all the time, that reading aloud to your kids is really the major method of helping them with vocabulary. Um, and it's pretty, it would, to think about this, like I'm thinking about my own kids. So I have a son and I have a stepdaughter. And I think about like so often when, when I think about the language I use with them, it's what's called social language. And social language has really limited vocabulary, sometimes as few as 500 words. And it sounds like this. It sounds like, we're late, get your coats, let's go. And so it's this really simple sentences and really simple vocabulary. So that's how we tend to talk to each other across the day. Whereas the language of books is what we call literary vocabulary. And that, that would have sounded like, if you'd seen that in a book, it would have sounded like they were running late. So they grabbed their jackets and they headed to the car. And it would have had more sophisticated vocabulary, more sophisticated sentences. And that would make a big difference to your kid's vocabulary acquisition. So here's the thing, even if you can't do it every night, even if it, it's, you know, it's as much as, you know, as often as you can, it is gonna make a huge difference to your kids. I mean, they learn a lot of things from Read Aloud. They learn a lot about story structure. They learn a lot about just talking about like characters and books. And, but one of the biggest things they learn is they learn a lot of words. So I just wanna show you a little bit of this because I know when my children were very young, I was confused about like, am I supposed to sound out these words? Am I supposed to test the kids? And that is one of the surest ways to make kids actually not love Read Aloud. So reading aloud is just when you're, it's called, we also call it lap reading. It's when you're snuggled up with your kids at night, you know, on the couch or as they're going to bed and you're just gonna read them a story. So let me just show you a little bit of this. I'm gonna pause and just show you a couple books. Okay, friends, so just take a look here. So these are like, these are the kind of books that your kids wouldn't read to you. You'd be reading to your kids. We've got this beautiful, like, We Are Water Protectors. We've got one of William Steig's books, Brave Irene. We've got this great Knock Knock, which is Daniel Beatty. We've got The Wolves in the Wall, which is Neil Gaiman. So watch out just for a second. I'm just gonna open it up. And if we open up Brave Irene, I mean, it starts over here and it says, Mrs. Bobbin, the dressmaker, was tired and had a bad headache, but she still managed to sew the last stitches in the gown she was making. So this is a little bit like if this were my kid, like when I first read this to Jack, this was one of his favorite books, interestingly. It's about, you know, set all clearly like a hundred years ago. And it's about this little girl who has to deliver a dress to a duchess because her mother is a dressmaker. I might have started out by saying, Mrs. Bobbin, the dressmaker, by the way, this must be Mrs. Bobbin, and it used to be in the old days, and probably, and still now, there are people who make dresses. She was tired and had a bad headache, but she still managed to sew the last stitches in the gown. That's just a fancy word for dress that she was making. It's the most beautiful dress in the whole world, said her daughter, Irene. The Duchess will love it. And then I might pause and say, Duchesses are like sort of they were like famous fancy people sort of related to royalty, like not quite a queen or a king, but probably part of the royal family. So then, you know, two days later, your kid will ask you to read Brave I Read again. And if you borrow books from the library, get them for at least a week, like keep them for a few days so you can read them more than once. Because the next time you go to read it, you're going to pick it up and you're going to be reading to your child. And it's going to sound a little bit like, you know, you've got the book in front of you. And as you're reading, it sounds like Mrs. Bob and the dressmaker, remember that someone who makes dresses, was tired and had a bad headache, but she still managed to sew the last stitches in the gown she was making. Remember, a gown is a dress. And by the second or third time you're reading this, your child's gonna be saying like, yeah, I know a gown is a dress. And now that word is in her vocabulary. And listen, it's not like you're gonna go through your day talking about gowns. I mean, you could, you could open your closet and you could say, wow, I don't have a lot of gowns, do I? I tend to really have jeans. <laughs> but really it's just that you're gonna be reading these books again and again and again. So let's go back maybe to another one here and just think, because other times, like if we look at this Neil Gaiman book, 
there's also words that kind of explain themselves, but if you emphasize them as they're reading. So this is this hilarious book about this girl who thinks that there's wolves in the walls. And most kids' picture books, that wouldn't be true. In the end, you'd find out that there are no wolves in the walls. They're like friendly squirrels. But because it's Neil Gaiman, who's a really famous writer for teens and for preteens, um, there are wolves in the walls in this book. There are actually wolves. <laughs> but so here's like a typical page. <clears throat> Lucy heard noises. And watch how there's going to be these big, fancy literary words that come up. But the book kind of gives you a sense of what they mean. So I don't have to pause necessarily for these. I could just say, Lucy heard noises. The noises were coming from inside the walls. They were hustling noises and bustling noises. They were crinkling noises and crackling noises. They were sneaking, creeping, crumpling noises. And then if I needed to, if I was unsure, I could always get a piece of paper or something and I could make, you know, a kind of crinkling noise or a crackling noise. And I could think about sneaking a crumpling noise. You know, I could do that. But you can see how these words then, again, I'm not going to go through my day saying things like creaking and crackling and sneaking and creeping and crumpling. Although once you read a book like this, sometimes you do. Sometimes you end up saying like, oh, that was kind of a crinkling noise because you've been reading the book. Um, so I think that one of the really beautiful things about these books is the way that they'll also teach words that that have more than one meaning. So like this is this really profoundly moving book that Daniel Beatty wrote, Knock Knock. It's a memoir and it's, it's a beautiful, he originally did it as a spoken word poem and you can find it on YouTube, it's so beautiful. Um, when he was really young. And there's this one moment where he's quoting his father, he's picturing his father writing to him saying, as you grow older, shave in one direction with strong deliberate strokes to avoid irritation. And with this, you can kind of act it out. Like what does a stroke look like when you're stroking shaving? And that will help your children you know, understand the word stroke. And when you get to irritation, you could say something like, I know sometimes mommy gets irritated and that means I'm angry. But when you talk about it in terms of like your skin being irritated, that means that it gets like bumpy. And it also sort of means like your skin is angry. Like if you scrape your skin, we call that being irritated. And so when you shave, you're trying to avoid making your skin all red and bumpy and angry. And now your child understands that there's more than one meaning of irritated. And you just tuck it in. So I'm not saying like, let's sound out that word, irritation, like, which could just make your kids you know, crazy um, and take all the love out of your reading. It's really that you're handing over words as you read. You're just tucking them in and tucking in little definitions and pausing to explain them as you go. And every now and then, if you're not sure what a word means, let's just look that up on our phone really quickly. What does that word mean? And then onward, so that you're really developing a love of story, but the literary vocabulary is part of it. So I gotta tell you, it's really magical. Like I look at my kids now and they have other faults, believe me, but they do have these sparkling vocabularies. And it's not from me, it's not from the words I use. It's from all these authors who lent words to our family. So, um, so I encourage you to, to just be doing a little bit more with the read alouds that you're already reading aloud, tucking it in when you can, and then pausing <clears throat> and handing over more and more words. All right, friends and families, I hope that this is helpful and happy reading with your children. Take care.